Yes. So let me now take up uh, a topic of my second session of today, uh, where I just want to brief you about what is uh, current, you know, technology. Oh, where are we moving? Uh, what is our, uh, you know, responsibility in making the technology uh, today uh, deployed in most of the applications of uh, Indian citizens, especially how well we can take it to uh, the lands of farmers. Where are we and uh, how much are we lagging, especially in India? Uh, if time permits, uh, what are the contributions of uh, great Indian technocrats and so on. But uh, the goal is to uh, uh, present you the current uh, technology, uh, some overview of uh, what's being uh, invented and uh, applications of uh, the current technology and so on. So uh, my talk and is entitled as some um, intelligent computing. Uh, that is called as uh, current paradigm of science. So if I say that it is current paradigm of science, then probably you may have questions on, sir, uh, what were the old paradigm of science? If this is called current, then uh, is it uh, second one? Is it the third one, right? How many were there earlier to this? What are the different uh, paradigm of science that we had uh, asked to throw so, so many years, right? Uh, in what way the current paradigm of science, you know, is different from the uh, rest of the paradigm of science? Uh, why is that called current paradigm, right? And so on. So uh, before I just proceed with this, uh, probably I just have my own way of uh, presenting things uh, because all of you are online and attending these lectures from your respective places. Uh, I feel really you missed visiting Mysore. So some of you must have uh, visited Mysore uh, many a times, some of you must not have visited so far even a single time. But for the people who are not still made any visit to the Mysore, probably have got a feeling of missing visiting Mysore city. Yeah, you must have that because Mysore is such a beautiful place to visit. So don't think that I am from a Department of Tourism uh, where I am highlighting the beauty of Mysore city to attract you people to visit. I am very much from the Department of Technology, Computer Science. But I feel this slide and a couple of uh, three or more slides would be of great support for you to understand uh, where are we as far as uh, technology is concerned across globe, you know, what we are really looking at. Uh, is that a conventional computing system that we are uh, working with or is that a smart computing system we are working with in what sense the computers are called today as a smart computing systems. Okay, so my cell phone, probably you believe it or not, so this is a smart cell phone. It has many, many apps, many applications where it can recognize my fingerprint and it, it operates only when I hold it. It operates only when I hold it. It doesn't operate if somebody holds it. I can set it up. So it's such an intelligent that it understands that I'm, I'm operated by my owner only and nobody else. Or it understand that my owner is not operating me, so I should not function. Right? Uh, this is what I call it as a smart cell phone. Uh, what really makes it smart? No? Uh, and uh, in what direction computer scientists are really thinking today? So this is what I just want to uh, present. Keeping in mind that some of you would keep uh, my presentation, you know, you listen to my presentation by keeping your research work in subconscious. You may be from the discipline of economics. You may be from the discipline of commerce. 
you may be from the discipline of mathematics you know irrespective of your discipline you have been working on some problem of research please keep that your your current research problem in the subconscious while listening to my lecture and check is there any possibility for us to have kind of collaborative research work where you can exploit the beauty of technology with my support for getting your problem solved or you can give me a domain knowledge where i can contribute some new technology to solve your problem in it so i am uh, while presenting this at one end my interest is to let you know what is happening as well as technology is concerned especially uh, specifically uh, intelligent computing technology is concerned and another uh, my interest is that you know it's if possible to you know explore a kind of collaborative research work where you have a domain knowledge i don't have a domain knowledge but i am very strong in mathematics and technology i can give that to you so that you can use it as a tool as a procedure as an app so, so to get your problem you, you may be from sericulture department where dr anjur sami came up so in sericulture department you know there are many challenging issue which you will uh, solve with your bare eyes or with microscopic imaging system right if you interf interfere in between as and do it in you know manually can we think of uh, bringing in some camera based you know app so that automatically the things will be done uh, i am good at it you know so that we can collaborate so this is what i am looking for on the other end that's another you know aspect of uh, uh, delivering this lecture to you people so i was talking about my city called mysore as and when opportunity arises i always love to present my city my people my department right i love to do that but i am sure that you would appreciate why i am trying to do this uh, it is a city of palaces and gardens uh, there are um, many sacred temples and shady avenues all in all it's considered to be a historic place happy that you know, the mysore city still retains a charm of the old world you know was known for uh, many you know fine arts like bharatanatyam you know uh, classical music uh, what not many many such you know institutions have been existing even today even today in mysore there we have a, a separate university called cultural uh, you know university uh we have a separate fine arts college in university of mysore as an affiliated college so all in all uh, mysore city is generally considered to be very beautiful and i am sure that not just because i am staying in mysore but generally mysoreans are soft soft spoken and well cultured and then because of that mysore city appears to be uh, all representing all all nature of mother india so it considered to be a, a good daughter a beautiful daughter of mother india if i show you a couple of pictures the way in which i shown you a couple of pictures in my first lecture on research documentation here also i have a couple of pictures for you to feel the beauty of mysore city so palace a very very attractive palatial building and we have saint philomena's church a popular in asia and holy temples including you know chamundeshwari temple on the tip of chamundi hill and yeah uh, mahishasura mahishasura statue a very huge uh, and we have uh, near uh, surrounding mysore uh, beluru halebidu uh, attracting people brindavan garden the very first garden where uh, musical you know uh, fountain was thought of by great uh, uh, engineer uh, sir c v ram uh, sorry sir c v sir visheshwaraya so uh, musical fountain first in its existence uh, today you see this musical fountain in many gardens that's a different issue but at that time you know a century 100 years ago uh, it was thought of by sir m vishwaswaraya and was uh, the first in existence in national park like uh, bandipur we have nagarwale uh, you know tiger reservoir and so on so is very very good amount of you know uh, sightseeing you know sightseeing places around uh, and within mysore 
ಗಗನ್ ಚುಕ್ಕಿ ಬರ್ಚುಕ್ಕಿ ಹಬ್ಬಿ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಝೂ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲಿ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಝೂ ಅಂಡ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ನಿಯರ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀರಂಗಪಟ್ಟಣ ವೇರ್ ಟಿಪಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ರೂಲ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ so these are all couple of pictures showing you the beauty of that perhaps you must have uh, established something in your mind about the beauty of mysore you know looking at this and listening my lecture probably you must have established you must have thought of you must have imagined how is supposed to be the mysore and especially this is our campus manasagangotri campus look at the building this is our crafted hall to the left side what you see is a crafted hall and what you see in the right side is our library building and what you see in between is jalakshmi uh, lost palace palace where the daughter of a king used to live that palace is part of our campus now i mean indirectly i am telling you that we are living in campus as if we are the uh, kings and queens you know we are the princes you know? we are living in that such a wonderful beautiful campus called manasagangotri campus so uh, having heard of these and uh, while looking at these pictures probably you must have computed something that mysore appears to be a really beautiful city when compared to uh, another city right another city which you have visited you know which you appreciated perhaps you may say that no it may not be as beautiful as this or it may be much better than that and so on i mean you you must have evaluated you must have computed you must have calculated you must have worked out you must have enumerated or in all you must have figured out something you know having heard of my lecture not only heard of my lecture i mean hearing of my lecture is a audio data it's a audio data looking at the slides which i displayed is a uh, is a image data right image data. and along with the image data there were some text lines you know lines written on the uh, slide characters that's the text data so i mean you will you, your your brain has taken the data through eyes data through ear right and some data are visually you know clear and some data are readable textual data readability computing is readable that's a text data not a image data whereas this picture is a image data and thing can be read but everything can be seen right so having seen such a visual data having having read such a textual data having heard of my audio data and now now you are in a position your brain is in a position to think compute something right calculate something work out something if you can do so if we the human being can do so the question is why not computer i mean i want computer to see uh let let set up a camera on a computer and computer will look at the objects we look at myself we look at somebody walking so i take the you know camera into a garden then computer has to list out all possible flowers available in the garden automatically right i mean i carry my smart smartphone in into a garden of flowers right during during uh, uh, dasara uh, you know season during dasara festival in mysore city the government of karnataka you know is a, uh, arranges a flower garden there is a flower garden and there will be a rush of people entering into flower garden and that exhibition is there for about two months i am not familiar i just go and enjoy the varieties of flower species available in the garden but unfortunately i am not in a position to understand the scientific values of each flower i am not even familiar with the names of such flowers right if that library can be developed in the form of a database and that, that could be deployed here available here with the support of you people who are from the botany background you know who are from articulture science background who are from agricultural science background if you all can join hands together and get me that you know use library of variety of species of flowers along with the pictures available then probably i can think of creating such a database here in my you know sub smartphone if not here physically could could be stored somewhere else in the cloud in the server and this gets connected through an internet and then a person like me who is not at all familiar with the varieties of species of flowers will just simply walk into the garden keeping the camera on of this mobile phone the moment i and the moment i look at the flower i also see that i look i look at those flowers through camera i don't see the flowers 
directly. I see those flowers inside uh, this monitor, right? Inside this monitor. So that I go on covering of through my camera all possible flowers. The moment I change my position of the camera, it focuses on a different species of flower. Then the 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 the, 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 the smart spoon should display. Oh, it is Mysore jasmine. It is sunflower. It is of this species type. And if, if I want something, if I touch it, then it should give me all details, scientific values of it, and so on. I mean, given is a picture of a flower, the system should be able to label it, you know, by its name, recognize it by name. Like I do, it. I look at, I call it a sunflower. If I can do with my eyes, why not my computing system, right? So this is what we are exploring today, right? Uh, to keep to keep you know every citizens with added support additional support you know so that uh, the system becomes i mean ultimate job is to see that the system would compute a non living being a living being like brain you know my brain compute similarly a non living entity called cell phone non living entity called laptop should be able to see and compute should be able to hear and compute right and then present something extracted out of it uh, as an added knowledge for the user. That is what is called a computing, computing, right? Computing. So what is intelligent? Intelligence is something, my ability to solve a problem. If I am good at solving a problem, I'm, I'm considered to be an intelligent fellow, right? If I have a capacity to learn, to acquire knowledge and make use of that knowledge with high degree of competency for making my problem in hand, really solvable, right? Ultimate job is to interact with you all. I, I access, you know, I, I just exhibit a kind of uh, intelligence. And that's what is called natural intelligence. I am a living being. I learn by seeing, I learn by hearing, I learn by touching, right? And so on. I, I learn a lot because of my different modalities in, in environment. And I, I keep everything in the repository of my library and, I, and that I use it as and when need arises. Similarly, if such intelligence can be created, if such knowledge could be acquired and deployed into the computing system, if such knowledge could be inculcated into existing computers, right? The computer science is abbreviated as CS. CS, CS means computer science. CS is also CS, common sense, CS, computer science, CS. Both of CS, I mean, common sense is what is called computer science. Computer science is what is called common sense. In my opinion, my job, my means a computer scientist job is nothing to do except some more to think of transforming my ability, my intellectual ability into a computing technology so that I inculcate common sense into computer so that computer starts exhibiting computer starts working like a human being, right? Supporting me like a, my personal assistant, my personal secretary, right? So that's what is uh, today uh, scenario. That's what is demanding today, right? So, but unfortunately it's not that, you know, the computers can be given in natural intelligence. Computers can be given only artificial intelligence. That's why you must have heard of artificial intelligence, right? So intelligent computing is, is nothing but computer exhibiting problem solving ability. Computers exhibiting a kind of communication skill across. Computers exhibiting ability to learn and relearn, learn, relearn. Look, friends, there are three things which are very important. Of course, in while talking about uh, general philosophy about research, I spoke about search and research. Here I am talking about learn and relearn. But in addition to learn and relearn, unlearn is equally important. Unlearning, unlearning. The best student is the one who not only learns and relearns, right? The best student is the one who not only learns and relearns, but also capable of unlearning and wanted. See here, I'm very good at driving. For example, I'm very good at driving four-wheeler in Indian scenario. Then I go with an international driving license to United States of America, where the driver sits on the left side of the car and drives. Here in India, India we have right side driving, right? And in, in, in the road, we go on the left side of the road, but not on the right side. The right side is for the reverse. But in the United States of America, it's the reverse. I go on the right side of the road, but left drive, left driving. Whereas in India, it's the reverse of it. Hope you're understanding me. 
So if I go with the same, I may be very good, very good a driver in Indian scenery. Or if I use the same knowledge, same you know, know uh, experience in United States of America, the guarantee that I meet with an accident. Then what I have got to do? The moment I step into America, I should unlearn my driving of India and learn and relearn driving in United States of America. The moment I come back to India, I have got to unlearn that. Look at. unlearning is very important but i don't talk about that unlearning ability of a computer because un- making computers unlearn is so easy you delete it you can simply at one stretch you can delete it but that's not possible here however you try to delete you try to remember it sometimes you know we don't want to remember some sad event which happened in my life some sad situation which happened in my life most of the times i feel that you know i should not remember it but more frequently if you feel that you should not remember it you continue remembering it try to understand that right i mean unlearning especially in natural intelligence is not that easy it is as difficult as learning and relearning but in intelligent computing that in making computers unlearn is quite easy because you can simply delete it again that's what so discovery of knowledge i want computers to look at and discover the knowledge i mean instead of presenting this mysore pictures palace zoo you know chamundi hill belur hale bid what not everything had a displayed that in front of a computer then computer are ex- is expected to say that dr guru you are displaying some pictures captured nearby mysore right that's what i want you know so discover the knowledge so computer should be able to discover something out of available though it is hidden inside i want that's what i call it as today data mining knowledge is discovery right and so you all of this you all of this so given is a book on ashoka chakravarti ashoka history a very 200 pages note you know textbook speaks about uh, you know samrat ashoka his family more more family right speaks about more family is 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 100 brothers you know about all 100 brothers about all you know uh, mothers of ashoka multi mothers you know there are many mothers for ashoka and then bindu sarai's father and his grandfather you know if i remember chandragupta maurya suppose there is a big story of ashoka samrat and family of 100 pages 200 pages one day i read through all 200 pages you know i read through i spent about 20 to 30 days reading through the book of 200 pages and then finally i sit one day and then imagine my reading i recollect oh, all 200 and you know pages and when i try to recollect it entire story will not come into picture but indirectly it comes into picture but only the summary of that appears the question is if i feed in all 200 pages you know text to the computer i want computer to automatically extract the summary part like you are writing you know abstract for a research article right after having drafted fully the research article don't you think that you just extract something and then you know put them in a more attractive way and plug it in the beginning of the paper like an abstract of the paper right i want that summary to be generated can i make my computer so intelligent so that given is a text paragraphs of 100 pages computer can generate only 10 lines extracted out of it or derived out of it extraction is quite easier but derived derived out of it and such computing technology is what is called uh, today's computers smart computer right so computers are uh, exhibiting such intelligence today computers are becoming smarter and smarter i mean uh, indirectly i am telling you that we have a wonderful course in computer science you know which lets the computer learn like like uh, we we let our students learn in my lecture hall similarly i i let my computer learn i train my computer computers are trained computers are allowed to learn right computers are taught yes computers are becoming day by day intelligent smarter and smarter so a doctors will be given personal secretary no more human personal secretary human personal secretary will be disappearing and computing technology will be supporting him tirelessly hard working computers right doctors engineers will be supported by computers teachers will be supported by computers right and so on it's not that i am talking about replacing people but i am just giving them an added tool as a supplementary tool not a complementary 
This is for me to understand God in a much better way. This is to understand my God in a much, much better way. It is an intelligent system having a thorough library of information. And I myself is a moving library. I don't want to get into the library of Manasagangutri campus and study hours together physical books. Instead, everything is available here. I am a walking library. Myself is a mobile library. So this is how we have to take it in a positive way. Of course, there are many negative issues related to this you know, internet technology. No, but only 10%, 2%, just to because of not being with a positive mindset. As long as we are with the positive attitude and taking up things in the positive direction, probably the technology is really, you know, wonderful contribution for the development of uh, any country for that matter. And indeed, today is earlier that not to consider any country to be a developed country. Uh, the people used to look at their temperature, you know, uh, moisture, and then geographical, you know. Or location and then uh, the currency value, what not, etc., etc. But today, uh, added parameter is that to what extent the country has made up its mind to exploit the beauty of technology to improve the productivity of every individual human being of that country. So, technology, exploitation of technology, we should, all teachers, irrespective of your discipline, should. Educate our students to practice computers, make use of computers, and so on. Okay? So, if I recollect Darwin's theory, theory of Darwin, which says, you know, the human beings have been evolved from monks, you know, monk, left hand side, you know, the world, and then the physical you know, appearance of a human being after millions of millions of years. Look, this evolution happened not within a single day, not even within, you know, one month, but it happened. Uh, after several years, so millions of millions of years, a big change happened, but change happened in two different directions. One is with the physical appearance, it, an animal which used to balance its leg with the, you know, balance its body with the support of four legs. As a human, an animal which can balance its body with the support of two legs. That's one. The second one, the intellectual ability. There are two ways of improvement, uh, evolution, I say. So, uh, human being have been, have been evolved. After evolution, you know, the man discovered cultivation, built a house and got settled down and then started living with others and thought of family structure, got married and then, you know, spouse relationship, children relationship, you know, all in all family structure and wanted to build a house, got it settled down, and then villages got formed, and towns are got formed, and transportation is improved, or not. While doing so, he also understood, please let me underline, it's very important thing which I really touch upon. I wanted to live comfortably well. In order to live comfortably well, I want support of my close neighbors, support of my good friends, support of my families, right? They are also living beings. They are also human, human beings. And there are certain animals, you know. Why can't I think of catching hold of the animals and take their support? See that the animals are supplementary to us. They are supporting us, right? They are not replacing human being. They cannot. But however, he, they, 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 those animals can make me more productive. During cultivation, I go for the support of hogs, right? During surveillances, I go for the support of dogs. And when I want to move from a location to a location, instead of going by walk, why can't I ride my horse so that I can go faster? If I want to carry the luggages from place to a place, instead of myself carrying luggage on my back, why can't I think of support of, you know, uh, take a support of donkeys so that big goods could be, you know, moved up. This is what he thought of. I mean, he wanted to catch hold of a couple of animals which are really controllable, except like lions, tigers, you know. Why can't I think of catching hold of some animals which are really controllable and then train them. Look at you. Train them. Give them a training. What I want, please train them so that they can start serving me, right? Given, giving them a training and then making use of their efforts, you know, their energy for my purpose. And such animals were called domestic animals. He, he identified certain animals called domestic animals and 
trained them given them a training look at here the dogs were given a specialized training even today police people are using are taking the support of dogs dogs were given special training oxes were given special trainings right for that i mean look at the oxes cannot be used cannot be replaced by dogs and dogs cannot be replaced by oxes oxes cannot be used for police purpose crime invention purpose right crime detection purpose whereas dogs cannot be used for cultivation horses can be used for only riding donkeys can be used for carrying goods but horses cannot be used for this and donkeys are not generally used for riding because donkeys were trained only for the purpose i mean look at it. no animal can be used for generalization no animal can be used for all purposes general purpose it can be trained and used only for a specialized domain i mean specially trained today also we are talking about computers which are manufactured only for a specific purpose computers for face recognition computer for attendance taking computer for fingerprint recognition computer for you know orthopedic x ray analytics computer for ct scan you know scan analysis computers for what education purpose computers for what biometric purpose computer for what you know surveillance purpose there are specialized computers for each domain i mean such computers are given special training like the way in which human our ancestors used to to give training for animal today the current you know scientists are thinking of especially computational scientists are thinking of giving them a specialized training for the computers so that computers will not continue to be general purpose computers computers become personally tailored computing technology so ganar the situation of natural intelligence what is now coming up in the technology is called artificial intelligence if i recollect the evolution of civilization especially right you see uh, different pictures you know uh, different pictures of uh, different civilization egypt and civilization very very attractive pyramidal structures in egypt if we go to egypt what really attracts us even today is uh, such a pyramidal structure very wonderful pyramidal structures look at the sharpness of the edges of those pyramids even today the trained civil engineers fail to construct such attractive pyramidal structures we have a formal education engineering institutions iits and all to generate civil engineers to produce civil engineers but earlier days recollect roughly about you know 2000 years back i am talking about 1500 years back i am talking about there was nothing like a school of engineering formal school of engineering people had never attended any class on engineering sciences but they were so strong at civil engineering like constructing pyramids and constructing attractive you know in ancient iraq look at the temple beauty beauty of temple right and open air theater ancient greek civilization open air theater and look at sindhu civilization known for reservoirs water reservoir especially so there was nothing like a formal education system but the people identified something a beauty hidden in the nature there is something hidden in the nature they started understanding the nature what is science science is nothing but understanding nature right science is nothing but a process of discovering something being hidden in the nature these people our ancestors during civilization the era of civilization they have really understood the science but unfortunately they did not formally put the science but they just have practiced the science they looked at the science from the point of empiry i mean practicality they practiced it he just have noticed some beautiful pyramidal structure in nature and then built up artificial pyramids and mountains something like you know reservoir and you know? i had seen some natural reservoir somewhere but far away from my city why can't they think of building up similar reservoir to store and use water during non summer season right this is what we thought of i mean the man went on understanding what is really available in the nature and how can i mimic it practically and there was such an era called civilization which was there for about you know 1000 10000 to 12000 years during civilization the science was existing the science is not today science was existing but unfortunately it was existing in the form of practice and such a such a paradigm of science such a period of science i love to call it as the empirical paradigm that was the first paradigm of science called empirical 
critical paradigm of science and subsequent to that you know probably in 1400 or in 1500 and roughly most of the things happened in you know 19th 18th to 19th century for about 500 years or for about 400 years you know some people took birth in my opinion i call them as great visionaries i call them as very great visionaries because the people could understand what is existing today what is existing today and what is not existing today that we can think of contributing for the next generation i call them as great visionaries like newton newton had seen an apple falling down went on inventing went on discovering you know theory of newtons and today we cannot think of physics without without newtons law george stephenson he is invented the steam engine nicholas august otto right amundsen engine diesel engine charles goodyear right charles goodyear aeroplane the right brothers have invented aeroplane look at the left bottom picture no i want, i wish you remember that picture that was the first aeroplane the picture of the first aeroplane invented by or created by right brothers lumine brothers look at my my system my smartphone has a camera but this is a mobile camera right i mean video camera but who invented this camera philosophically science of this you know this is technology of is very small beautiful but science wise who invented that the notion of moving pictures that's what is called lumine brothers right telephone alexander graham bell thomas edison invented bell these are all the great visionaries c v raman for that matter our great indian scientist pythagorean there are great mathematicians great scientists right look at these people have contributed a lot to the society and because of their sacrification of life you know because of their sacrification we are enjoying today today we are happily living because of their contribution and that that period was there about uh, 400 to 500 years look at please understand in my lecture the evolution of human being from monk happened for millions of millions of years and then there was a civilization era it was for about 15000 years i mean millions of millions of year period has come down to thousands of years now subsequently there was an evolution of science which was there for about 500 years the period has come down to hundreds hundred of years and then subsequently probably you will notice that it comes down to only decades i mean the period is coming down but the rate at which change happens in happening is in very in increasing the change happened during this evolution of science is really drastic very very considerable big big change has been missed and in addition to that these people have noticed the importance of mathematics in the present in science they identified the mathematics as the language of science they declared it to be language of science they wanted to argue they wanted to present every science you know in terms of mathematics so that mathematics conveys x as x so they realized the importance of mathematics and declared it to be the science you know language of science and so on and that was a period which was there for about 400 years and that is what i call it as theoretical paradigm of science first one is the empirical the second one is the theoretical so during empirical science was there in the form of practice and during theoretical science was there in the form of theory mathematics was brought in and declared and documented they appreciated and then they realized the importance of you know document and so on and so forth okay so theoretical paradigm of science and then if i share with you the observations probably you must have observed so far listening my lecture that you know what man achieved during thousands of years was relatively less a great change started appearing during the late 19th i mean you recollect your high school compare your life of high school with current you know high school children probably you see a big change why you just recollect one year ago 
and compare with today you see a big change i mean in every aspect of our life there is a there is a big change happening you know i said in the last lecture what is permanent in life is change but, but look at that the rate at which change is happening is increasing like exponentially it is increasing exponentially earlier it was so small the rate at which change was happening was negligibly small but during civilization some you know it got improved and then during science drastic change but today there is a big change what is existing today will never 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 exist tomorrow it will disappear tomorrow what you had seen in the morning while moving towards our college you will never see again while coming back home in the evening right it change happened what is responsible for this big change amazingly the changes during the past 50 years especially for the last 50 years if you are not 50, i can recollect my life you know if you are not 50 years old recollect you are just 25 years back you know compare your current life against the life we had during your bachelor's degree you see a big change in you right why the reason is it is because of charles babbage charles babbage happened to be the father of computer the founder of computers right who invented mechanical computing system so because of that you know earlier we used to define computers as a mechanical system but today computers are electronic system and earlier it was general computer today it is a specialized computer personally tailored in computing technology we are talking about and because of this charles babbage who invented this mechanical working computer in 1950s 50s only 70 years back you know there was a great mathematician called turing the turing has had given an abstract model i mean a mathematical model stating that the charles babbage computing called mechanical computer will be replaced by really working computers which are in the form of digital science wonderful mathematician right uh, we must appreciate their imagination look at anyway charles babbage had given it a different direction for the technology for the science initially and now it has become a technology so what is really you know responsible for such a amazing changes happening today it is not the science it's not even the philosophy it is an engineering aspect of it and it's not even simply an engineering aspect of it it is because of the technology aspect of it material science has come into picture you know and because of material science everything what you wanted appears to be in a small you know object very negligible size earlier when i started my bsc in computer science computers used to occupy a single room one computer used to occupy a big room of size you know 20 by 20 but today in 20 by 20 hall we have a very powerful 50 computers working right materials material material science today we are talking about material science right so that's what is called textile engineering we are talking about textile engineering textile technology we are talking about today right so look at that is what is uh, responsible for technology is the and especially it's not mechanical engineering is not electronic you know engineering it is a computational science which is responsible and such a paradigm of science is called computation paradigm third paradigm of science is what is called i mean everything is in the form of computation today everything is on computers today earlier it was practiced manually then later mathematically now it is computationally and such a, a shift happened and third shift is what is called computational paradigm responsible for today's intelligent computing technology so we can use those technology to uh, because of lack of labors right and because uh, of increased population i have to serve all person in the use population i want to have a quick access quick service so computers come into picture i have to finally uh, optimal my output you know productivity uh, increases that you know this possible when i am supported with uh, additional tool and that additional tool is available at a cheaper rate because of current technology so uh, it is for fast and accurate you know av- available high computation with uh, low cost sensors uh, this is all i mean uh, there is a uh, specific community of researchers called ai researchers artificial intelligence researchers they are uh, working towards this you know uh, making computers intelligent so computers should 
to learn to acquire knowledge and skill i mean the way in which i train human being i want a method of training computer so that computers can uh, learn and acquire knowledge right computers can learn and acquire and computers can serve my uh, requirement and so on so increase in use of technology increase in use of technology uh, uh, and then computers have to learn and there is a course called machine learning it's not human learning it is not human learning it is a machine learning computers learning look at artificial intelligence so intelligence is a capacity to learn and solve not by a brain but by a robo think of a robo so robo can be trained so that robo can be used as an assistant right so look at how, how is that possible i am just showing you some couple of image examples i want you to uh, understand what are these pictures so probably while looking at this 4 uh, into 3 tall image as you may understand that there are some pictures related to food item right look at this is typical this is food item maggi this is compline right food item there are some pictures which are food item there are some pictures which are advertisements right there are some pictures which are into books library right i i just have understood looking at this without even you know uh, having any displayed information on these but my vision system is capable of my gen knowledge base is capable of digging out that there are basically three varieties of images here right similarly i want computer to learn and classify them as these are the images belonging to library these are the images belonging to food item these are the images related to advertisement and so on so it has to identify the patterns you know what images are looking similar in what sense they are looking similar right if my vision system along with the brain say that so look at there are two entities involved in this process one is vision system another one is a brain analogous to this vision system we have in computer science computer vision image processing analogous to brain calculation we have machine learning we have pattern classification pattern recognition and so on yeah, these are integrating them helps us in mimicking the way in which human being work on that look here is one more probably you see what is called a set of oranges pictures of oranges pictures of elephant pictures of human being especially men and pictures of mysore pak sweets pictures of uh, capsicum i am talking about five classes oranges elephants men mysore pak capsicum i am talking about five classes then i present another one which i which i have not given you now i just have shown you only these five classes now i just present the new one you know unknown unknown i want you to categorize this being a member of one of this known classes does it go to orange does it go to elephant does it go to man does it go to mysore pak does it go to capsicum right a simple question i am asked then i am sure that he would end up saying that it goes to men you know why what pattern in the image appears to be closer to the patterns of that men but not closer to the patterns of elephant patterns of capsicum if my vision system can acquire it and classify it why not the camera of a computer right then what is the technology what is a model to be deployed this is quite interesting problem for machine learning people right so today computers can classify computer can recognize people computer can recognize my fingerprint and distinguish it from other fingerprints right computer can recognize face of a a human being right computer can recognize person walking person running computer can recognize person seated computer can recognize donkey you know or dog jumping and so on action recognition trajectory matching right a big information retrieval google supports you retrieval of data through typing uh, keywords but i want today google can also you know it is also giving a tool like you upload an image and get the similar matching images right if you can upload my lecture audio along with this video to the google probably you can get my old you know lectures showed in youtube right similar topic or the same top same person talking about or my look at the trajectory of my body right body language and based on the body language i want similar similar videos to be read this is what is the current technology right? things are becoming smarter and smarter and human being is not becoming smarter and smarter today because he is making other non living things to be smart right so here are some pictures 
I want you to understand these pictures. How do you understand these pictures, right? How do you understand this picture? Probably you end up understanding that there are there are basically five people who are considered to be politicians, and uh, sorry, men, and there are four who are considered to be ladies, and there are two which are considered to be food item apples. Okay, this is one way of understanding. Another way uh, could be that you know you understand that there are five people, there are three men and two ladies who are politicians. And two ladies and two men who are actors and two apples, right? This is another way of understanding. I mean, I just want you to look at this pool of images, pool of images, pool of patterns, and group those into multiple groups. You know, cluster them into multiple groups, wherein in each group you have similarly looking images. In other group, similarly looking, right? In one way or the other way, these are strongly related. In one way or the other way, these are strongly related. Whereas one from here and one from here are not that strongly related from my perception. So here, my perception is to understand a politician and an actor. Whereas in the previous one, men and a woman, right? This is how you can classify. Similarly, the best thing is we better have with the five. First one is politician, men. Second one is men, actors. Second one, third one is female politician. The fourth one is you know female actress. The last one is apple. So which is I got to learn. How do I learn? If that could be inculcated into the computing technology, computer starts running, right? Learning and uh, exhibiting grouping, so that you can use this group formed by the computer for subsequent actions. So this is then now question is if this picture is given as an added picture to you, right? After this. Where does this go? Obviously, you will classify it to be a female first, and then you can classify it to be a politician because it's picture of Indira Gandhi. You know that it is Indira Gandhi, or because she looks so beautiful, as beautiful as those two actors. We can put her into actors group also, right? This is how. What I want, I want to know who is this or where does it go in subsequent. This is what is called relearning. This creation of this way of method of representing is what is called learning, and using this knowledge for subsequent labeling of an unknown entity is called relearning, right? Relearning, unsupervised. Say here is one example. There is a well-secured campus, and cars are being driven inside, and there is there has got to be a personal security guard, right? Sometimes he goes sleep. Sometimes he may not be. You know, he may be on leave. Nobody reports. Instead of that, why can't we think of using the technology today? So we have the, such a gate which is automatic. There is a camera set up. Look at there is a camera set up here, and there is a gate here. And the moment this car touches the sensor on the road, automatically this camera captures the picture of this car and then reads out this number plate. And the number plate, you know, will be read out and numbers will be recognized. And then it gets matched against uh, listed authenticated cars. If it happens to be one of the listed numbers, then automatically gate will be opened and car will be allowed to pass through. Right. So this is another automation of tile inspection. Tile inspection means the moment tiles have been manufactured, you know, the tiles will be allowed to pass through on a conveyor belt. Conveyor belt carries the tiles, you know, and beneath that there will be sequence of cameras. Pictures will be taken when while tile is moving across, it goes in a different by subjected to different rays, you know, and then uh, different oriented pictures will be captured. And every oriented pictures will be matched against the reference pictures. If there is any mismatch, then tile will be rejected. Otherwise. Tile will be accepted as a quality child, tile for uh, you know delivery. So look at this is a quality assurance in manufacturing company, a drug manufacturing company. Technology is used in any company today. There is a quality assurance before any product being developed or you know manufactured in a company before delivering them. They must be subjected for quality assurance. Like we conduct examination before we deliver the students to the outward. You know we conduct examination. Whoever is successful, only that candidate will be delivered, and rest of them will be retained back for another one year. Right? Similarly, yeah. Before a manufacturing company delivers a product, product has got to be subjected for quality assurance. Now the technology is being used, computer vision based technology. It works like a human being, right? So forensic applications, 
I, I doubt if you can read anything written on that, you know. So image processing technique can be used to see the unseen. You can see the unseen. There is something which is earlier written. 10,000 was written and then striked out. So earlier there was a white patch, white paper. I above that, you had written 1,000, you know, 10,000, and then you striked out. There is a three layer, right? Layer one, layer two, layer three. Layer one is a white paper. Layer two is 10,000. Above that, there is a striked character, striked color. Now, if you remove this, you can see this. Even if you remove this, you can get that white back without losing, right? Without losing the quality of that white paper, you can get it back, like erasing, right? First level erasing, second level erasing, and so on. So that's what is possible today with image processing. If you want, you can make it more enhanced so that clearly visible, right? And so on. I doubt if you can see anything here in this picture. Can you? I doubt. You cannot. Today we have a technology where if this picture is given as input to the computing technology, computer will highlight what is really done inside. Enhancement, improving the quality of appearance of a picture, right? In case if you, if you go to Shimla during winter season, if you go to Himalayan, there is, a, there is a lot of snow, no? And even if you take selfie, in that picture you are not visible because fully covered by mist, snow. But don't forget to take a picture. Even if it is selfie, take a selfie and see that you are inside the environment and bring it to my laboratory. Even if you are not visible in the original picture, I see that the picture's quality will be enhanced where I discover your presence over there. That is what is called image processing, right? Look at. Not visible clearly. Clarity is not that good. It's very poor. Then you can improve the clarity of appearance of the picture. It is a processed picture. Image, image will be processed for one, improving the quality of appearance. Image can be processed, not to myself look at it, but the computer can work on it. So uh, once it is look at, this is given, then computer convert this into this, and then computer will identify the roads, computer will identify the garden, computer will identify the forest and marks it up, segments it up. This is a you know, forest area. Automatically, I'm talking about. I am not involved. No human being is involved. Automatically, right. it marks this area. This much is the forest coverage. In Mysore city, entire satellite image. This, this uh, you know, uh, square uh, meters is covered by forest area. This square feet is covered by, no, square meter is covered by uh, Mysore town, Mysore city. So Mysore city, geographically, is bigger than the forest area. Something like that, right? And so on. And in Mysore district, this is the total hectares of land used for, you know, paddy crop, used for coconut, you know, used for mango crop, and so on and so on. The automatic calculation is possible today because of computer vision approaches. So you cannot see, I don't think, you know, if you can see there are people standing in this picture, right? And if you process it, you can see the faces of those people and count them how many are there. So this is what biometric, you know, trades must, you must have used these in your institutions for uh, attendance purpose, right? And in agriculture science, there are many, many openings. And recently I have published two papers related to uh, uh, internal, uh, you know, de detection of internal defect in mangoes. What is that? No, probably you must not observe in mangoes. Uh, frequently you must observe in apples. You buy an apple, looks very reddish. But when you cut it, you know, inside there is a black soft tissue that you don't, you should not eat that apple. It's not good, it's not healthy apple to eat, right? But when you look at outside, you cannot, you cannot detect it. Similar things happening in, you know, similar thing is true in mangoes also. Mango is really a perishable crop, you know, and very delicious fruit, you know. We love to eat it. But most of the times I buy the mangoes and the moment I bring in home and cut it off, I see a, a very you know soft tissues inside. Uh, it's not healthy to eat. Then before buying, at the time of buying itself, if I look at it from outside, it looks so good, but internally defected. Can I bring in some technology? I go with my mobile phone. I click it up. The moment I click it up, the mobile should say that, look, there is some internal defect without cutting the mangoes. I should not damage the mango without destroying it. I should be able to check if it is internally defective. If so, I can grade the mangoes, right? I can grade the mangoes. 
this is possible today recently i published two papers in elsewhere science journals you know related to that internal defect detection not using x ray if x ray is used then you have to put a label stating that this mango has been subjected for x ray then it's not uh, you know generally good to eat right then we have to go for some non destructive mechanism uh, x ray is one non destructive but unfortunately uh, we have got to label the uh, and you know, prove that it has been subjected for x ray and nobody loves to buy it then you have to go for nir spectrum right that's a lt to eat also so we just have published two papers on that you know in elsewhere science recently so plant sciences you know most of the in my village especially in chamrajnagar side you know there are many many plants which are of medicinal importance but unfortunately we are not aware of the importance of those medical plants but we simply spoil them we simply you know remove them from the agricultural lands but if i can bring in a technology where this is trained well in distinguishing identifying which are all the medical plants which are not medical plants then i being a farmer go with the camera setup and show it then it should say that oh it has some medical you know importance then i can i can retain it i can preserve it i can allow it to grow and so on right there are many many interesting work to be accomplished but we are good at technology we are good at modeling but unfortunately we are not good in the domain knowledge i don't know which is medical plant but i want you people to support us agricultural science you know articulate science people botanist you know zoologist and what not you all have got a domain knowledge i am good at technology let's hand you know join hands together to make things possible right so medical sciences uh, selective harvesting that's what i go to a mango tree and before i pick it you know before i just uh, cut from the tree i got to check whether it is matured mango or not right but most of the times i'm not trained well for it can we think of coming out with an app android app so that i can use a mobile to check whether that matured or not if matured you just pick it up otherwise don't harvest it right after harvesting is it ripened or unripened and most of the time when you go to market you know i also have got a paper on this when you go to a market buying a mango you really worry about whether that mango is really you know naturally ripened or artificially ripened and artificially ripened means chemicals is used ethron solution is used you know ethron solution is generally used to ripen the mango if if it is ripened because by the use of chemical i don't like to buy it i want to buy mangoes which are naturally ripened however cost they are i don't i don't mind paying additional money for that because i want naturally ripened mangoes and most of the you know market people really cheat us telling that it is naturally ripened sir but it is chemically ripened how do i how do i differentiate can we bring in the technology to differentiate and given is a mango and in the moment you take it should say that it is chemically ripened or it is naturally ripened maybe 90% success rate right 10% may go wrong i don't mind right this is what even on this topic i published paper in elsewhere science uh, journals uh, classification of uh, uh, mangoes into underripe uh, ripe naturally ripe and chemically ripe and right under naturally ripe and over ripe and if it is over ripe and over ripe and with black spots on the skin or without black spots on the skin if it is with black spot does it have internal defect or does it not have internal defect these are all the different classes just we have addressed in my laboratory so vision based system to grade the crops like I, what i said you know maybe different leaves probably green of tobacco leaves right to improve the marketability of them and so on so storage process quality check uh, there are many number of problems related to food industry unfortunate that to state european countries have banned our you know mangoes importing mangoes from india because uh, the indian government did not have a technology to grade the mangoes and most of the mangoes which were sent out of india uh, used to be internally defected and that's why european country have banned you know import of mangoes from india that you in 2014 right the indian government is now really looking for technology that so this is how the system works you know mangoes are allowed to pass through and there is a camera camera will look at the picture and computer will classify based on that ripened and ripened if ripened naturally and, uh, and artificially and so on classification 
automatically reading in animal science health monitoring you can you, you want, once you look at somebody or your own kid you know walking style and the face appearance i think there there's something problem probably you are not looking you know you are not feeling good right there's some health issue related to that similarly if you look at an animal you know the style with which a dog is walking cat is walking at home you know you don't think that you say that dog may not be comfortable today health monitoring we'll keep the camera especially the working people your husband and wife both are working and children will go to school but old you know parents are there at home they are they their 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 health situation has got to be monitored we can keep the camera on in your residence and see that camera will sense and if there is something abnormal behavior of your old parent is see then camera should send you an sms to your mobile stating that your parent your mother is not feeling comfortable today she has fallen down why don't you come home today now immediately then you can start moving to this is what is the technology right? animal biometric wildlife tracking right look at the recognition of animal based on the face appearance right uh, tracking of animal right and so on so giraffe and what not and medical sciences we are talking about you know brain tumor detection breast cancer detection and calculation of different levels of breast cancer you know cancer early detection of cancer this is possible because of the technology right uh, x ray analysis this is what uh, recently myself and my scholars have uh, worked on uh, related to covid 19 right look at this is a drone picture captured of you know during covid 19 lockdown period from my you know bangalore city with the permission and the, the problem was to identify if uh, there is you know violation of uh, uh, what is called as uh, social distance look at Uh, let me see the next uh, look at on the top left of uh, that uh, video so you see that it's a drone is moving and video is being captured and then the system would at real time real time i am talking about so the people were identified cars will be identified vehicles will be identified and mutual distance will be calculated and if the distance is smaller than some you know predefined distance then violation of uh, social distance message alert will be generated otherwise no and so on this is a drone you know video captured which we worked recently uh, recently means last uh, june month uh, 2020 june roughly about 8 months back we worked on this problem related to uh, covid 19 right so cough detection uh, now it, today it, it has uh, I, i mean applied research i mean applied research is there only as long as that requirement is there today this research has gone nobody is using it now because the that uh, covid 19 situation is almost reaching normal situation but at the time it was very important right the cough detection people used to walk on the road and used to cough and suddenly ca- the drone camera used to uh, catching and informing the police people so that are you know uh, health related people Uh, so that they can come and uh, take him into uh, covid 19 hospital and so on so this is around about crowd detection right see that there are boxes written and crowd dispersed crowd uh, formed and so on and so forth right crowd detected crowd crowd uh, dispersed and so on okay if many people go together it displays crowd detected if people go far away then suddenly crowd dispersed it says right automatic real time so that this camera is an intelligent camera this camera is is placed in you know hard part of the uh, city and uh, uh, we can notice that the people are in crowd right and so on social distance so there are and all of you are listening and enjoying right but i don't know most of you must not have been inside your computer sorry in front of your computer and even if you are in front of the computer most of you may be sleeping then one has to at academic staff college or, you know hrdc of mysore university has to sit and watch your video continuously oh but in offline classes i can monitor right because it is a physical presence but here i cannot monitor your presence you may be simply listening closing your eyes or you may be sleeping or sometimes you may find it very difficult i like to look at your facial expression that's what is really missing in online education 
then can i think of an app which is deployed in your laptop and a mobile so that mobile senses you continuously and as long as you are alert it doesn't send any video to me the moment you are sleeping it's it should send that at, at this time he or she started sleeping guru sir right and uh, opened her eyes after 5 minutes or this man is finding your talk very difficult looking at the facial expression can i think of that no that is what is called accountability of attendance so this is a, that's an another uh, activity detection like you know here see myself is standing on the right side with the t-shirt you know look ah that event has got to be detected fall has happened crowd got formed people are taking care of him right this is into sports environment right third umpire automation automation of third umpires even today in international cricket game you know third umpire is manual can that be automated right and so this is another like man disturbing people and not playing and man hiding the camera if somebody wants to do an ethical thing you know he will first close the camera the moment he closes the camera it is called uh, uh, that that should be identified so that camera should be intelligent mates of people look here i just want you to carefully uh, see this here is a blue colored you know a blue colored dressed person please watch him there is a man with a blue dress please watch him he is climbing the ladder this is a real video he unfortunately he fell down had there been a camera set up which used to monitor him continuously that camera must have given him an alert stating that be careful right i want such a vision system that's the technology today this is bangalore traffic traffic uh, probably in the last january 2020 before covid automation of number plate recognition even finding vehicles labeling vehicles uh, you know detecting their make you know is really tough but we attempted towards uh, uh, number plate you know readings so here it is stop in between you can see that uh, numbers are displayed here extracted are displayed here here is the number of the car displayed red numbers are red right automatic this is this is really required for police people because this this lane is not for cars this lane is especially in bangalore this lane is reserved for a heavy vehicle like bus and lorries and scooters cannot and uh, uh, four wheeler like cars cannot you know cannot use this lane this is reserved only for buses and lorries so in that case people, police people have got to put them a fine you know but because of heavy traffic and dense traffic police people cannot stand there and take care so instead of that can we deploy a computer you no know, camera and camera will recognize the number plates of those you know vehicles which are violating the traffic rule so that automatic mails can be generated and to be delivered to the inbox of you know the owner of those cars so that he he will be paying the penalty so and this is another let me run this see there are uh, vehicles passing through the trucks are passing through and this is a secured zone and the trucks may be you know may trucks have got to take a permission to enter into the safer zone you know secured zone then the trucks may a form a queue then if it is a queue then how many queue trucks are there in a queue at 10 o'clock in the morning how many trucks are there in the queue at 2 o'clock in the evening you know in the afternoon how many trucks are there in the evening at 7 o'clock if the queue is so long then what is the dwell time waiting time of each truck uh, i got to calculate automatically right and finally my computer do, should display this information i don't want that video i want only this information i don't want your videos attending my lecture i want only information that you have attended fully or not if not how long you attended right within what time to what time you went out of the scene how uh, within what time to what time you seated in front of the computer but with a closed eyes so you seated with in front of the computer but your facial expression was not so happy was so dull right so that's that information i want to be displayed on the dashboard of my computer this is quite interesting you know phenomena so uh, dear friends uh, sign language understanding driverless car we are talking about news categorization smart television we are watching television no 
and down the line another one or two years you will be having a television watching you watching you and then automatically you know monitoring themselves so uh, our lab is called data analytics and learning lab uh, we have been working on this domain for the last 22 years my phd was in ai when i started my phd on ai i worked on industrial object recognition people used to laugh at me that yo you are making computers intelligent in recognizing objects of industry objects i worked for car industry man in car manufacturing industry uh, people were laughing at me but today it is the time you know it is the time to digest it is the time to deploy ai based solutions so with all this world is changing that's what we have been understanding what what i indirectly presented look at that was the first aeroplane this is the current aeroplane the smartness is improved but the science is same philosophy is same appearance is really smart that's because of technology that was the steam engine this is the current bullet engine you know bullet train the technology matters not the science not the engineering not the philosophy but the technology right that was the earlier uh, telephone umbrella this is the apple cell phone today right so look at that earlier mechanical computers today is a digital apple uh, computer so smart televisions uh, smart everything is smart right pen drive pen drive is a moving library mobile library moving camera look friends we were talking about the evolution of man no we should not talk about evolution of man we have to talk about evolution of robot today it's not from monk to human being it is from monk to robots who are human being so today human being is becoming like a monk only look at the first left side picture monk and look at the man seated on a chair physically he looks like monk only today but what is really looking like a human being is a robot in front of him robot looks very smile you know very uh, very happy when compared to the human being we are not happy today robots are becoming happy so we should stop in future speaking on evolution of man we should speak on evolution of robot intelligent computing system that's the history today right so if i sum up my lecture i think i am on the right time now i just have spoken about intelligent computing and empirical paradigm of science and critical paradigm of science uh, computation paradigm of science ai the importance of ai today and many many applications looking for your uh, collaborative uh, joining hands for making research Uh, further growing in india so that we can take the technology to the layman in india farmers especially i am very much interested in agricultural sciences taking the technology for agricultural sciences to improve the productivity of food productivity of uh, you know uh, farmers of india so if you are really love to share your domain knowledge with me working hard with my team members along with your team of students or yourself i am really happy to open up my you know technology domain to cover up your uh, applications but i expect you to give me a domain rich knowledge so that i get you the technology for you thank you one and all thank you very much for this uh, patience with me thank you sir uh dear participants if you have any queries please go ahead otherwise please One of the participants have come forward, come forward and uh, propose. Ah, uh, sir, Sangam is here. Is good. Ah, uh, sir, uh, not a question actually, as such, mm -hmm. but just a uh, state uh, or just a uh, statement to say that uh, technology in zoology or wildlife conservation is very much well well adapted actually. Mm -hmm. So even if you just to identify a tiger. Mm. Uh, or we we have camera traps wherein it identifies the stripes of the tiger and differentiate between oh uh, they are not only the same tiger they are different correct uh, so there are so much of technology involved but yet many things to be discovered so i think this is a well adapted domain for both the uh, natural science and the technology correct correct not well adopted is being adopted still we have many challenging opening yes, issues sir. to be addressed yes sir yeah so, i feel it's very informative thank you hello yes sir guru sir respected guru sir tell me sir 
ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಕಳೆದ ಮತ್ತು ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಸೆಷನ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಮೇಲೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಅನ್ನ ಅಪ್ಲೂಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರಿ ಸರ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನೀವು ಚಾಮರಾನಗರ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಬಹಳ ಖುಷಿ ಆಯ್ತು ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಚ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೆಲಿವರ್ ಕೋಆರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ ನಿಮ್ಮಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸರ್ ಪರವಾಗಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳನ್ನ ತಿಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಸರ್ ದೇವರಾಜ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಶಾಲೆ ಲೀವ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಂಜುಣ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಪಾರ್